Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Father, we thank you. We give you honor and glory for your great name and for the wonderful blessings that you've given to us. And all of those blessings come through the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. And we just thank you. We thank you for him. We thank you for all that you do. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. thinking about those who aren't able to be here this morning. Some are on uh, a vacation, some with family. Um, we just got a text from Ernie, uh, from Gerald actually, and, and Ernie is in a lot of pain and not able to come this morning. We want to remember him in prayer. Uh, Brother Gene Millard back in the hospital with that uh, foot situation, um, and so we want to keep him in prayer. Um, I know that, um, just, just a second, um, Dr. Timothy has been having a lot of problems with his, uh, uh, with his kidneys and the, and the pain that goes along with that. Um, and so those are people we want to hold before the Lord. Okay. Um, you might remember a lady that's come about three times. She a lot of times sits right over there. Um, her name is Charlene. 
Charlene, and her husband's name is Ernie. So we've got an Ernie and we've got the other Ernie. The other Ernie is a truck driver and he is um, home right now with that flu thing that's going around. And um, for a lot of people, then when, that, when, that's, when, the, when this newest flu hits, it's really hard. Temperatures go spiking, just horrible, uncomfortable, just miserable. So we want to remember him in prayer as well. Uh, so we've got Ernie and Ernie um, and the other ones that I mentioned, other, other people that you're aware of that are just in a hard spot. I would just like prayer for a speedy, speedy recovery, healing, because I had both batteries replaced, not just one. And it's very uncomfortable. She's our bionic woman. She <laughs> runs on batteries. Um, so, I mean, what can you say? She runs on batteries. So, they, but they have, but to, but to replace the battery, they have to do a minor surgery. And so, we want to pray for her as she uh, gets through that and gets on the other side of that. Um, so, let's all stand. Um, I will, I will tell you this. Um, that we have a, a, a lot of people, some of you that have not been here before, but we have, we ha we have ministered to the people in our local county jail, um, and, and we bought a pair of socks for all of them. They were just in desperate need that way. And um, they have had temperature problems there. So they're very thankful for those socks, that keeping their feet warm, okay? Um, so that might be one of the things that we can also pray for that uh, uh, I don't know if the temperatures are obviously been extra cold, but that's not totally unusual for Springfield. This is a new jail. It should have been built to handle that. But we just don't know why they were, they were struggling temperature-wise. But we want to pray uh, for them as well. It's, it's, uh, um, it's just, I mean, it is what it is, but it's not the best. So, Naomi, do you have another? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Father, we'll, we'll just start, Lord with the jail and all because all of the people that are there both the inmates as well as the workers are just uncomfortable with the cold and 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 that kind of thing and and father we pray that you will give them wisdom how to adjust things and make it to where before the next cold spell hits they do not face this lord and so father we pray that we pray that you would give them uh the the, the ability lord to find that quickly and get that thing taken care of quickly and father we we thank you that we were able to bless them in a way that is, that is really helping them right now. And we ask that your presence be with them, Lord, as, as I don't know what they do there on Christmas Day. But God, under the circumstances, let it be the best Christmas that it can be. And Father, we pray your hand upon Ernie and Ernie, Lord. We pray for um, Ernie Netherland. We pray against uh, the, the, the cancer in his body. We pray against the pain that, is, that he is battling Father, we bind together in the name of Jesus. And your word says where two or three agree is touching anything. And Father, we definitely are in agreement for this, for healing in Ernie's body. And Father, we rebuke the enemy, and we speak healing and health and peace into his body in Jesus' name. And the other Ernie, Lord, we pray for him as well. We come against the, the flu and, and all of the things that are going on with this flu situation and all of the problems that that creates. Father, we pray your healing power in his body, and go, Lord, just let this uh, Christmas day not be a day of suffering for him, Lord. But let, it, let that thing break and let him be back into good, just normal good health, we pray. And Father, we pray for Brother Gene Millard, holding him to you, Lord, for, for uh, healing in that foot, God. He's, this has been months and months that he has battled. And God, we just, we just pray your mercy and your, and your uh, healing power be upon his body, Lord God, to bring it into this and bring him into a place of healing and health and strength. And we also lift uh, our Brother Timothy to you. And we ask, Lord, that your hand would be there. God, this, this, this kidney issue has been a long, I guess maybe all of his life, Lord. But it's been a long, long-term issue. And Father, we pray against the damage and the, and, and the deterioration that's been a part of this kidney issue. And Father, we pray that you would just rebuild that kidney, Lord God, or the kidneys, plural, Lord to bring healing and health and strength and into his body. And we pray against the pain, Lord, uh, that really is debilitating, God. It just it knocks you out. And, Father, we pray against that. And we pray again a, a good Christmas day for him. And, Father, we bless all those or 
who, who are with family and friends, Lord, and we bless them on Christmas Day. Ask your presence and encouragement and peace and strength be with them. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to give you a chance to bring an offering real quickly, but we'll mention a couple things. One, we're not going to have prayer tonight here. Um, family time with Christmas, this just the people will be tied up with that, and that's wonderful. Um, and then Wednesday night this week, we will not be having um, a Wednesday night Bible study because we're having a, a Saturday night, a New Year's Eve gathering, okay? So if you need to write this down, 7 o'clock it starts. 7 to 9 is a, wor a church service, worship, a praise, uh, some preaching. Um, 9 to 11 is food. That's going to be our, our joint meal. Okay, and we're going to make it more light uh, in the ideas of, uh, of, of, of soups and stuff along those lines. Okay, um, so you figure out how you want to do that, but, that, but we're going to have that and the stuff that goes along with that kind of thing. And then um, at 11 o'clock, it'll switch back into a time of prayer. And um, the, um, I, talking to Pastor Oscar from the Spanish church, um, they sometimes go to the wee hours of the morning. You're welcome to stay here as long as your body can handle it. If you're like me, you might go home at 10 o'clock or so. But um, just come when you can. If you, if you want to be there for the first part of the service, or if it's like I can only spend so many hours, or I would, I would rather come with the fellowship and go to, go to midnight with prayer, that's great. Whatever works for you, but that kind of is the idea of the outline, okay? And then we have a situation, your neighbor, um, a single lady with a five-month-old little girl, and, and uh, Lynn happened to kind of bump into her and found out that um, she has nothing. She was sleeping on the floor. Okay, so if you, and, and, and most of you probably would not have Lynn's number, so if you have something that you can use to bless her, you can either like bring it in next week and we'll figure out how to get it over there, or if um, you, know, you can um, call my wife and my wife can give you Lynn's phone number. And, and we can make, and we can do that. Um, does your dad still have a, little, a pickup or anything like that? Nope. Okay. So we'll, we'll figure out how we're going to get stuff to, to her. But bottom line, she's just in a hard spot. Okay. And sometimes we have a, a way to help. And if we do, we want to give you opportunity to do that. So just be thinking about it. Um, I, I, I assume linens, pots and pans, the silverware, the dishes, any and everything she needs for the house. So just think about it. See what ways you can be a blessing. Okay? So, yes. Yes, thank you. Yes. Always something to... I forget. <laughs> but thank you for people out there that get my attention. Next Sunday... Because some of the people might be praying till 2 and 3 and 4 a.m. We, we are going to join the Latino service, the Spanish service. We're going to join them at their time at 2 o'clock. Okay, 2 o'clock, the service will start, um, and it'll be a joint service. Those are always fun. The worship just goes through the roof when we're together. I mean, we, get, we, we got good worship. I'm not, I'm not going against that, but I'll tell you what. When, the, the, when you get more people together... And I just love the fact that two cultures worship in Jesus together. And that's awesome. So anyway, uh, that's Sunday. So we got, a, we got a really different week this week. And then we'll kick back into more normal and unless the weather does crazy stuff. Okay. So, Father, we thank you for coming to a close of this year, celebrating Christmas, celebrating the new year as it comes up next week. And, Father, we just pray your blessing and encouragement with each one through this week, Lord God. Let it be a wonderful conclusion and a wonderful beginning, Lord, of a new year in you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Amen. Ah, good job. I, um, I won't be long today. I know, I've said that before. Yeah. Right. 
I like that. Start, I, I started to say uh, uh, famous last words, you know, ought to, not going to be long, famous last words. But anyway, um, I do want to, as, as I'm thinking about Christmas and all, I uh, began to just really consider some things here. And, and um, we, a lot of times on this time of the year, uh, we read and hear uh, Christmas songs and, and, and hear Christmas messages uh, almost to where you get tired of them almost, you know, almost. Um, but there's, there's something that, as, as I was looking at some things here, I, I began to see something that was a little, perhaps a little different. I don't remember anybody ever sharing on this. I, that's not saying that they didn't, I just don't remember it, all right? Um, which I can put that towards my old age, or I can put that towards not be, whatever. Anyway, you can just put it however you want. But um, let's read a little bit. Matthew 1, 18 and 19. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost, and Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Now that's out of the King James Version. In the New American, in the American Standard Version, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Now, there's two main differences here in, in these two scriptures that I want to point out, okay? Um, and I'm going to talk about it, uh, this one here in a minute. Mary being betrothed, and I think, let's see, it says, uh, espoused, okay? And the King James was espoused to Joseph, and in the... Uh, uh, betrothed to, to Joseph, okay? Now, um, oh yeah, Luke chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, and Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Now, I want to just pull out something here. We talk a lot, of, most Christmas messages deal with Mary, and, and that's fine. It's a good thing, okay? It's, it's really a good thing. I'm not trying to downplay that. But I want you to look at something else here. It says, first of all, that uh, Joseph and, and uh, Mary were espoused or betrothed, and she was found with a child, okay? So Joseph had a, a choice. He had a choice that he had to make. And the main part of my message that I'm going to talk to you about is not Mary, but Joseph. I want you to think about him for a few moments, okay? Here he is, his, his fiance, if you please, his espoused, betrothed wife, uh, is found to be with child, okay? Now the scripture is very, very plain on this. He had a choice, right. which is why he is saying, that why he's saying here, uh, back here in the, this other scripture, says uh, he was not willing to make her a public example. He could have made her a public example. Okay? In those days, well, let's just read it. Deuteronomy 22, 23, and 24. If a damsel that is a virgin is betrothed unto a husband, that's what Mary was, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, or she becomes pregnant from him. Then ye shall bring them both out of the gate of that city. Ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because, well, I'm going to stop right there, because the main point I want you to notice is he could have had her stoned. Joseph was of the lineage of David. Joseph had a, uh, uh, an understanding of a prophetic word to become, that the Messiah would come through the lineage of David, through, uh, right through David, and through, possibly through him. But here he is, his wife, his fiance, if you please, is found pregnant, but not by him. He could have just said, 
I'm a righteous man. I'm not going to put up with this and have her stoned, and he would then be seen as guilty. Hello. And she would have carried the shame of that pregnancy into her death. Deuteronomy 24.1, when a man ta hath taken a wife and married her, espoused her, basically, in their eyes, and it came to pass that she found no favor in his eyes because he had found some uncleanness, or she is now pregnant, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. He could have divorced her. By the law, he could have just divorced her. The shame is on her and her family. She lives with that shame for the rest of her life and her family as well. Yeah. Hello. But what did that scripture say? Being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. In other words, what he did is he went ahead and he took her for himself. He, did, he covered her her okay he he covered her he began to take the shame upon himself and i don't have it up here but there's a scripture let me see i think i've got it written down here somewhere um oh where is that oh matt in mark chapter 6 and verse 3 jesus is called the carpenter's son not the harlot's son He's called the son of the carpenter. So Joseph took the shame upon himself as though he was basically saying, I got her pregnant before we got married. Hello. All right. I'm just kind of setting a little bit of a scene here for us. I want you to understand what was happening. Joseph began to recognize the situation, and here he is, uh, he has, he, this is why he's wondering about what's going on in, in Matthew there. He's wondering, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20, why he's wondering, you know, what will I do? What's going on? And then the angel comes and begins to speak to him. Amen? You guys know the story, right? Hello? Okay. Did we have too much? Candy? Anyway. All right. Stay with me. So, so Joseph begins to take, and he begins to realize that... This woman that he's to marry is somehow pregnant and he begins to cover her rather than let her carry the shame herself. In fact, there is a scripture, I just happen to remember, there is a scripture that says something about um, Jesus being the, the, um, um, an illegitimate child. So people knew. Okay, people knew. But Joseph began to cover her. Joseph began to take care of her. Okay, now he had choice. He could stone her and be seen as righteous. He could write her a divorce, uh, a bill of divorcement, be seen as righteous. He would be taken care of. No problem at all. You're a righteous man. In fact, what did it say back there? It said, Joseph, her husband, being a righteous, in the King James, a just man. Just or righteous. In fact, that word is the Greek word, and I won't pronounce it, but it's the, in the um, Strong's 1342, equitable in character or action, by implication, innocent, holy, absolutely or relatively, just, righteous. That's what the word means. That's what he was. That's who this man was. And because of that, he did not want to make Mary a public example. Amen. Matthew 1.20, while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Marry thy wife for that which is conceived in her. See, he's considering. He's wondering, what do I do? If I take her, my chance of bringing forth the Messiah is gone. I, but I'll be seen as a righteous man. I, I'll be seen as a just person. 
and she will carry the shame for and good enough for her. No, that's not what he did. That's not what he did. No, he covered her. He protected her. My servant's about over. That's what that means. So an angel has to come and speak to him. An angel has to come and talk to him and tell him, look, no, the thing that is there is birth of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be afraid to take her for yourself. And so he begins to take her and they become, uh, and he, like I have said a couple of times now, he begins to cover her and take the shame for himself. He does this for himself rather than making a public example out of her. Amen. All right? Amen. So I've been thinking about all this. He has the prophetic word, but here his disposed wife, his wife is pregnant. But he was a just man, a righteous man, not willing to make a public example out of his wife. And so we know the rest of the story. He takes her, and like I shared there, they go to uh, Bethlehem, and, and, uh, and in fact, uh, the ba baby is born, and then as they are there, uh, the Lord speaks to him in a dream and says, you know, flee to Egypt and so on. You guys know the story. It's, it's told over and over and over again, especially this time of year, just told over and over and again. And so he begins to hear from God and protects not only Mary, but that baby. Amen? So what does that have to do with you and me? As I began to consider this, I began to see something that I don't think, like I said, I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone minister on before. He was a just man, loving God, loving Mary, loving and honoring the, the um, uh, law and the, the principles of God, obeying the things of the Lord. And he may have experienced some of the shame of being, of having a woman who was pregnant by another. I'll just put it that way, all right? A woman who was pregnant by another. But he hears from an angel. How many times have we heard, oh, so now angels are talking to you. Yeah, he hears from an angel and he sees in a dream and he begins to take her and he begins to cover her and take care of her. And so I began to realize, and I began to wonder, Lord, how just am I? How righteous am I? Do I really love the Lord enough to hear from him in a situation like that? the Lord enough in a situation where uh, it just seems like everything is, shame is being placed upon me. I, I just, just about to uh, receive all kinds of shame and ridicule of, of the people. Love him enough to go ahead and experience that hardship, to go ahead and experience that shame, to go ahead and allow those things that the world would speak. He was. And I think part of the lesson here is that so should we be. That we're willing to experience the hardships. We're willing to experience the shame at times. We're willing to experience, and even to, like Joseph did, begin to take it to ourselves to protect our families, protect our wife, our children, protect maybe our grandchildren, whatever. Where are we willing to take that shame and that hardship and possibly ridicule of others because we've heard from God, because God has done something and we know 
that God is still in control. That it doesn't matter what it looks like on the outward. It doesn't matter what, how it seems out there. There's something greater going on here than what I can see and what I can understand. Are we as men in particular willing to do this? Are we willing to allow that shame? Are we willing to even cover those, the one or several perhaps in our family? Cover them and let the shame be brought to us. And then the next thought was, but Joseph took that upon himself, and in doing so, he was used of God to help bring forth deliverance and healing and life, eternal life, to millions, perhaps billions of people. How do we know that what we are experiencing, that when we embrace the hardships, when we embrace the difficult times in our life, how do we know that that isn't the thing that is about to birth something that's going to bring forth deliverance to others, that's going to begin to help others to be healed and be be set free into the things of God and begin to come and to know really the, the reality of Jesus Christ? How do we know? Now, Joseph happened to have an angel come to him. And maybe we may need that, I don't know, but here's the thought. Joseph was willing to endure that, to cover his wife, to take that shame upon himself, to bring forth something that brought deliverance to the world. Are you and I willing, this is my, this is, this is a thought, this is what God has hit me with. Are you and I willing to take the chain, to take, now I'm not talking about purposely bringing shame on ourselves, okay, you understand that, right? I'm not talking about that, but when things happen and we begin to realize, oh God, why, why, why are we willing to look to him and to say, you know, Lord, it's still in your hands. And we just look for good. Romans chapter 8. All things work together for good. And we're looking to see the good come out of what it seems and appears to me to be a shameful event in my life. Are we willing to stand in God? Are we willing to be that just and righteous man? I appreciate Mary. She carried a lot of the shame herself. But I appreciate Joseph as well. Like I said, said, I've never heard anybody share anything about that. But Joseph, being a just or righteous man, not willing to make a public example, not willing to put her up, even though it could mean that he stand righteous. Instead, he was willing to take the shame. He was willing to receive those, those uh, negative words, all those things, He was willing to take that to bring forth what God wanted was bringing. What is God wanting to bring forth in your life and in mine? Are we willing to bear that shame? Are we willing to bear that? And it may not be shame. I mean, let me put it this way. And, and you can apply this how, how it applies to you. As I was praying last night, and we were praying for Ernie and, and um, Audra, a friend of ours that is stage four cancer, that they were just hoping she'd live through the holidays. And, and another um, 
a pastor's daughter-in-law up in, in Windsor who's also got stage four cancer and, and then a pastor friend in, in outside of Windsor that has got a rare heart problem that has put him down and, I, and we're praying for all these different people and praying for some of you and so on and uh, Gene Millard and others. My heart, I'm saying, God, I believe your word. Your word says that by your stripes we are healed. We were healed. I, I, your word says that we can, we can receive the healing. Your word says, I preached just the other night, Lord, that the altar of, uh, uh, or the table of showbread is only 18 inches tall. It, it's, it, it's short enough that even a baby can crawl up on it and get a hold of it and pull up and begin to eat of that bread uh, and begin to, the, which is the bread of healing. We can begin to receive healing even as a baby begin to, and God, I'm not a baby, but why? Don't I see the healings that I know is not only available, but should be there. And the thought came, am I willing to bear the shame of praying for people and not seeing something happen until it happens? Or, and they say confession is good for the soul. Or am I pulling back, not praying for anybody because I don't want the shame anymore? That's where I'm at, folks. That's where I'm at. I've had too many prophetic words, and I reminded the Lord of this last night too, too many prophetic words that said healing was going to come as you laid hands on people. Healing yeah. was going to come. As diff- I mean, he- it just over and over and over again from different people around the nation. It's happened, okay? And yet I have not seen it the way that I know God can and wants to do it. Yeah. And so Joseph is standing out to me as a man a just, righteous man that was willing to bear the shame until he brought, the, until what God was doing was brought forth. And I don't know that Joseph ever even saw it. Now, I know you can get some of these Catholic films that show Jesus as a little boy raising another boy from the dead and, and taking a dead bird and, and just breathing on it and then flying away. And I know, I, I, you know, I see it and just, I just, oh God, I don't believe it. I, I don't. Because his time hadn't come yet. But when the time came, was Joseph even there? Somehow, I don't think so. After about Luke chapter 2, we never hear of Joseph again. Or wherever it is. After they're in the, find Jesus in the temple at the age of 12, from that point on, we never hear of of Joseph again. He may never have seen the fulfillment of carrying that shame and of covering Mary, covering his family. He may never have seen it, but he was willing to take it upon himself anyway. And I just wonder how many of us are willing to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and wait for him to make all things right. To begin to produce, begin to turn things to where all things become good. Not that they start out good, but all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. That's what Joseph was. That's what Joseph did. How willing are we to cover somebody else 
to protect them, to stand with them against the accusations of the world, even against the things that the righteous people, the righteous law, would say. Let's stand. I told you I'd be quick. But I hope that you hear my heart God's really speaking to me about this, and I, I want to be that righteous man. I want to be that just man. I, I want to see those promises of God that he has given to me. I want to see them come to pass. I want to see the prophetic words that God has spoken over each one of you and over this church. I want to see them come to pass. I, I, I want to see it. And to be honest with you, we carried... For a number of years, the shame of, oh, you go to prayer, oh. And then people turning away from us and having nothing more to do with us. We carried that for years. What is Jesus, what is God asking you and me to carry today? Are we that righteous person that just says, it's all up to you, Lord. I just give it to you. I'm willing to endure whatever comes my way. But I have to see fulfillment of your promise. I have to see the fulfillment of all that you have spoken in your word. Father, in Jesus' name, I speak first of all to us men. You've given us promises. You've given us prophetic words. You, you've spoken things out of your word to us. You, you, you've you've put so much before us. And we just come before you. We declare your word is true. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter <clears throat> what's going on around about us. Your word is true. And Father, I speak to all of us, and to the church as a whole, You've given prophetic words. You've given unctioning of your spirit. You've, you've spoken to us and you've, you've opened up your word to us. And at times we, we walk in it for a little while and then we just seem to stumble and fall back or, or, or we just begin to doubt, we begin to wonder. And Father, I, I, I wonder if Joseph went through some of that, if, he, if there were times in his life that he began to just sit back and just say, oh God, did, did I really hear from you? Did, is this really the Messiah? Is this really your chosen one? We don't know. All that we do know is what the Word says. And the Word says that he was a just man, a righteous man. And he was not willing to make a public example of Mary. Help us, Father, to so cover one another. Help us, Father, to so cover <clears throat> our wives, our children, our families, Lord, that even if something happens that would tend to bring shame from the world or even shame from other Christians, other Christians would begin to, and they should never do it, but they do, look down upon us. Help us, Jesus, to carry that and to stand with our eyes fixed on you, to see you high and lifted up and to see you turn everything for your glory and your honor.
Lord, this was just a short message, and I, but I believe with all my heart, I know it is speaking volumes to me. And I hope and pray it is to others as well. But Father, I come to you now. Lord, if there's anyone here that is experiencing some difficult times, some times, Lord, where maybe they're wondering about the shame or wondering about what other people are talking and saying or did they really hear from you or, 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 or are they just walking in, in a mist? Lord, I pray that you'll cover them right now, that you'll speak to their hearts and their lives. Minister to them by your spirit. Let the peace of God come upon them, Lord. Help them to really see you and to look upon your face. Your word says that it's an unveiled face. So, Lord, help us to look past the things that we may be experiencing and look into you and into the fullness of all that you are and all that you have for us. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, once again, I just cover anybody, anyone. And while everyone has their eyes closed, I want you, if, if you're feeling something there, you, you're, there's been some problems in your life that you're experiencing. You want, I want you to just lift your hand real quick. Just lift your hand. Amen. Hold, hold it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now and especially pray for these. We ask your covering upon them, your ministry to them. Lord, for whatever the problem might be, whatever the situation might be, as they embrace even the difficulty and they embrace even the promises of God for their life. Lord, let the peace of God so move in their heart and their life that they experience your presence in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for it. Amen. God bless you.